Medical information obtained from our website or the live show is not intended to be a substitute for professional care. If your pet has or you suspect they might have an illness or other medical condition, you should consult a health care provider. The opinions expressed on this radio program are not necessarily those of All Paws Pet Talk, this radio show, or their sponsors. This copyrighted broadcast is presented by All Paws Pet Talk Radio and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Any information or segments of this show and all of the shows may not be disseminated without express written consent from the All Paws Pet Talk producer. Hey folks, welcome to All Paws Pet Talk Radio and TV. I'm Chris Rubin, your host and pet industry pro, along with my co-hosts and cohorts in crime. There's <laughs> Dusty Rainbow. She has done so much for cats, I can't even explain it at all. We just call her the crazy cat lady. And then there's Janice Weiss. She's done that much and more for dogs and horses. She's crazy too. That's why we love her. Welcome, ladies. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Hi, I'm Burt Ward, Robin from TV's Batman, inviting you to feed your dog Gentle Giants dog and puppy food. Dogs eating Gentle Giants and following our special feeding and care program are living as long as 27 healthy, active years with a wonderful quality of life. Holy wow, 27 years! Think of all the extra years you could enjoy with your dog at Target, H-E-B, and stores near you. Try Gentle Giants cat and kitten food, too. As we, uh, get to Mother's Day, a big day in this country, um, a lot of flowers are going to be exchanged and given. And although these present beauty and they liven up the house and they make humans happy, we also tend to not be the species that consume those plants as we walk by. Uh, so many times the flowers and plants that come into our homes as a Mother's Day uh, gift can present real dangers to all of our pets. And mm -hmm. this is an important time to remind you to be mindful. Again, responsible pet ownership. Be mindful of what's coming in your home and what it can mean to animals. And I'll start with you, Janice. Tell us a little bit of what you've lived, your lived experience with this subject. Well, with dogs, we assume that because if, if you have a small dog and it's not able to jump up on your dining room table, you feel that you're safe. But you also have to remember that there are things like pollens and other plant parts, plants that fall apart, right? When flowers die or, or different plants die, they're falling and they're fallen leaves. For instance, I have a beautiful fig tree in my conservatory. And every so often I notice a tooth print or a little chunk of it missing. So this morning I put a little X pen around it because fig leaves can be toxic to dogs. We all know the chocolate, the onions, the mushrooms, certain things um, of exposure, some of the garlics. So we're familiar with that, but we have to realize sometimes there are other toxins and carcinogens and poisons that are in our area, uh, not just flowers, but also decorative plants. So again, the fact that a dog is a certain size and typically they don't jump up on the counters, we feel like we're in a safe spot. However, we have other animals in the home who can get up onto tables and can get into things. And that's why Dusty is going to explain why just the fact that you have something uh, above or uplifted on your counter if you have a kitty, you better remember kitties can get up there. Hey, Dusty, yeah. tell us about that. Why, what do people have to be careful of with cats? Well, okay, we all want to give our mothers the, the perfect Mother's Day present. Let's face it, go-to is chocolate and, and uh, flowers. But uh, one of the things, we want to make sure whenever we're gifting our moms or friends or loved ones or whoever, uh, uh, flowers that are safe for the particular pet. Uh, one of the biggest problems that we find, especially at Mother's Day e and Easter, 
uh, are lilies. And uh, lilies are so highly toxic to, to cats. Uh, as a matter of fact, any part of the plant, uh, whether it be the, the bulb, the, the flower itself, even the pollen can actually cause fatal uh, kidney, uh, sorry, <laughs> kidney failure. And uh, so you, you really need to be careful about that. And especially since cats live in three dimensions. And uh, the, the odd thing is, it's not even a problem for dogs. Uh, I had a, a kitten when they had just discovered this in the, the early, uh, early 2000s. Uh, I, uh, my wonderful husband had given me a beautiful spring bouquet for my birthday. And uh, I thought, okay, you know, I had actually heard that the, it was a problem for cats, but nobody got on the counter. Well, the foster cat got on the counter. I looked over and there he was with a mouthful of Lily. So immediately took him to the vet. We got him on IVs. We uh, attempted to uh, induce vomiting. Of course, he didn't. Um, and the, the vet argued with me. She said, Dusty, you're overreacting. She showed me the Merck manual, and the Merck manual said it caused gastric upset. Well, uh, I argued with her, and I called uh, animal poison control, and as it turns out, they said, yes, yeah, since you got him on IVs in the first 15 minutes, he's probably going to make it. So uh, lilies make... Uh, dogs feel bad, but it will definitely kill a cat. So make sure whatever it is you send, you know, is uh, safe for cats. And you can find a list on the ASPCA poison control list of what is safe for dogs and cats and other animals as well. And just think all these, uh, what we need to find out is, is there a spike around this time of year? I'm assuming there is a natural spike because otherwise we wouldn't be talking about it. <laughs> people calling poison control trying to figure out what's going on um well that's really important stuff and so again chocolate certain flowers it doesn't take much to to contact one of us or uh, get in touch with your local vet vet tech and ask some some great questions about uh, what to look out for in particular for your pet so mm -hmm. be mindful be responsible I'm Burt Ward, Robin from TV's Batman, inviting you to feed your dog Gentle Giant's canned dog and puppy food, prepared with fresh meats, fresh fruits, and fresh vegetables that can make a huge difference in taste and nutrition for your dog. Our 27 and a half year old wolfhound Tara has lived more than triple her normal lifespan, eating only Gentle Giant's dry dog food mixed with Gentle Giant's canned dog food at Target, HEB, and stores near you. Try Gentle Giant's cat and kitten food too. Gentle Giant's for life. I'd also like to now bring in and introduce our guest today. Her name is Lisa Beth Klein, and she is an attorney that focuses on all matter of animal law, which in this case is relevant. And with that being said, Lisa Beth, welcome to the show. Hi, good afternoon. Chris, it was interesting. I was listening to you talking in the back, and actually you made the one comment that's totally relevant for today. You made a comment about responsible pet ownership because February is Responsible Pet Ownership Month. Oh, so it's awesome that I actually got to talk with all of you today. And you kind of, even if you were talking about medical marijuana being left out or non-medical or, <laughs> or uh, microchips, February is Responsible Pet Ownership Month, so it's very timely for me to be able to talk with all of you because there's a bunch of things that owners can do to be proactive to make sure they take care of their pets. What would you say the most, give me the top three that you think the a new person adopting a pet or bringing that pet home for the first time, what are the three things that people really need to focus on? So one thing is who actually owns the pet? That is vitally important because you have a lot of people who are cohabitating, whether it's college roommates, just friends, uh, with your significant other, which, you know, young love, they always think it's going to last forever. Um, so if you are adopting, you need to make sure you understand who actually owns that animal, right? Because if the relationship, friendship or romantic goes south, you don't want to have to worry about what happens to Fluffy, 
right? Does Fluffy go with person A? Does Fluffy go with person B or person C? You know, it could be anything. So in order to get around that, one of the things that I tell any of my clients that walk in the door is that they should have an agreement between all the parties, right? Even if it's a romantic relationship that you're in, if you're going to adopt, who's going to be the owner? Whose name is the, going to be the microchip? Who's the one who's paying for vet bills? Who's the one that's going to do the registration? So that that way, there's no questions afterwards, because the court in all 50 states actually um, treat animals as property. Uh -huh. Now, it's to varying degrees of what you can do with that property, but they don't look at them as a child custody case. So that is mm -hmm. one of the things that I would say is probably the top thing is to make sure that before you get the animal, especially if you are not in a married relationship, because that's mm -hmm. a whole different family law will take care of that. Um, make sure you have an understanding of who actually is going to be the owner or what's going to happen if God forbid this relationship goes south. So that's well, one. You say family law takes care of that part of it. And I hear what you're saying, but does the, does it one versus the other, uh, is there any difference in the apl application of the law? In yeah. some places there is, which is why it's really important depending on what state you live in to speak mm -hmm. to a professional of that particular state, right? In New York, um, there's some new laws out where they look at best interest to some degree. Mm -hmm. New Jersey, where I'm sitting, doesn't do that. It's usually a replevin action, which basically it's just property. But they're starting to look at animals slightly differently. So it depends on who the judge honestly is and if they're an <laughs> animal lover. <laughs> but if you are also in a family law situation where you're dealing with a divorce, um, New Jersey, at least, for example, is an equitable state. It doesn't mean equal. It means what's the best or most fair. So they'll take those things into consideration as to, all right, well, you get part of the 401k, but I'm keeping fluffy. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. So they, they will factor that in. Hmm. That's fascinating. And so what is the strangest case you've had to handle? I mean, you... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just have to ask because when you tell me so far, um, the strangest case that have dealt with animal because I've had some weird cases that don't deal with animals, but um, <laughs> they're just animals of a different sort. They're animals of a different sort. Yes, the human animal. Um, I think I I dealt with a custody case that. Um, involved you know my first what is the top thing make sure you understand who owns the animal um and because of attorney client privilege you know i can't give you too many details of obviously but it involved custody of of a dog that had been obtained um after a relationship was actually over between friends hmm. and it was just kind of odd um hmm. <laughs> for a whole bunch of reasons but i would say that was probably the most unusual one, but I've also represented a lot of rescues who, um, through one reason or another, the adopter had violated their contract and they had to reclaim the animal. And then the former adopter actually took them to court because they were like, no, we didn't violate it. Or if we did, it's still our, it's still our pet. And that's not exactly how the court sees it. Wow. Hmm. Crazy. Yeah. So there's, there's some unusual unusual things. People get crazy when they deal with their animals, which I fully understand. I have a house full of animals. I live in Noah's Ark. That's totally <laughs> fine. Um, you know, I do. I have one asleep at my feet. But, you know, that is one thing. I mean, ownership is so very important of knowing who that is. I mean, another thing that's really important also is making sure that you've planned for if something happens to you. Agreed. Right. Um, and not just if you die. Yes, that's important. <laughs> um, because again, under all 50 states laws, a pet owner can't leave any part of his, her, or their, so we're you know, completely inclusive, mm -hmm. a state outright to their pet, right? You can't just leave your entire estate to Fluffy, right? You can leave a sum of money in, you know, to a trustee that's designated to care for your pet and with a request that that money be used for the animal, but you can't just leave it directly to the animal, but setting up a trust is really very, very easy. And that's one way to handle it. 
You also may want to set up a trust if you know that your brother is awesome with your dog. They love each other. They're bonded. Your dog would probably leave you for dead if he comes to visit kind of thing, right? But he's terrible with money, right? <laughs> so what you might want to do is you might want to set up a trust where in your will, you would directly bequeath your dog or cat, horse, turtle, parrot, whatever, to your brother, because you know they would be a very responsible owner. They would love that animal as if it was theirs. But you put the money in a trust that someone else is going to take care of. It's done similarly with children, mm -hmm. right? I know that my sister would be great with my kids, but she can't balance her checkbook. So therefore, the money would go to my brother, right, in that case, but she would get custody of the children. So it's a similar type of concept um, that you can do that. But it's really important to take care of them so that they don't end up at a shelter. I have a mm -hmm. phospis in my house. He's a 19 year old cat that I got about two months ago, right after my 19 year old cat passed away. Mm. And he ended up there basically because owner dies and none of the family wanted him. So, and it wasn't, there was no will. So the cat got dumped in a shelter. And I was like, I can't let a 19 year old cat die in a shelter, right? I've brought him in. He's getting along really well with, with everybody to some varying degrees. He's old, so all he wants to do is sleep, which is fine. He's entitled. If he <laughs> wants to drink scotch, he's entitled. Like, I mean, he's old, he can do whatever he wants. But, you know, if you don't plan for these things, this is what happens to the animal that was there for you that you love more than anything, right? So you have to think about that. But there's also, what happens if you get sick? Maybe you didn't die, but you end up in the hospital or you're in a car accident or, you know, something mm -hmm. happens. You need to also have a plan for the immediate care of your pet, right? Whether it's with a neighbor or whatever, that you already have a plan. You've spoken to someone that says, if something happens to me in the short term, I need you to take care of my animal. And this is how you do it. This is where the vets are, things like that. And I also recommend to all my clients that in your wallet, your pocketbook, whatever you want to call it, you carry a little card that says, hey, I have these animals, give their names, what they are, and say, this is the person to contact if, you know, something's happened to me. So if you're in a car accident, right, mm -hmm. they're going to call who? They're going to probably call your spouse or something like that, right? But you also need someone to call to make sure that, you know, Fluffy gets fed because they don't know why you're not coming home. Well, and so, it seems like we, we as a panel have talked about in terms of subject matters, uh, um, this also being relevant for natural disasters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because Absolutely. Because they happen all the time, right? So whether it's a car wreck or a hurricane or wildfires or whatever. Right. Again, have a plan. That's the responsible right. thing to do is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. And that's the third thing, right? Have a plan that if stuff goes south, you have a house fire. You, you know, you suddenly have a tree fall on your home or something like that. Have a plan so that you know what can happen to your pets. I have a neighbor whose kitchen caught on fire. They didn't have a plan. And all the neighbors were like scrambling because animals were just running all over the place, mm -hmm. trying to catch them. Right. I was on a walk and someone's like, I need your leash. Thank you. I have a very well-trained dog. So I unhooked his leash and handed it over because I knew he wouldn't leave my side. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you need to have a plan. And you should have, you know, like, I've never been a huge proponent of the emergency bag because I think it's fatalist and I, you know, I try not to panic and that kind of thing. But having a little backpack or something that has, you know, um, an extra leash, a bowl, if they have some medication, just, you know, rotate it out every so often or have the medication easily mm -hmm. where you can grab it. Um, so that if you do have to leave quickly, whether it's for a natural disaster or the house fire, or a tree falls in your house, whatever, you can just grab it and you know that your animals are going to be taken care of because you also have a plan. Can, can I add one thing? We were talking about proof of ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, getting back to the microchips, the the microchip is, is an important part of that proof of ownership, isn't it? It is. Um, whose name is on the microchip? It's also really important to keep your microchip updated. Yes. yes. Right? It like, is. it's really very important to update the microchip. Because I think I I there we go. Um, sorry. If you, if you adopt, 
Most rescues are going to have their animals microchipped, right? Mm -hmm. The puppy that I just adopted, who's four months old and wreaking havoc in my, my kitchen right now, I'm sure, <laughs> is uh, because I know yes. that the, the, the people who are down there are not paying attention to the puppy. Um, but he has a microchip that was listed with the rescue. I had to add my name to it. And then once he is neutered, then, you know, they will always keep their name as a secondary person in case, God forbid, he gets lost in case I don't update it. Right. Mm -hmm. But you should always have updated information. It's good to have a cell number, not a landline, because most people keep their cell numbers. I've had the same cell number for almost 20 some years. Right. Um, you can have other information. The newer microchips also will let you designate things like my son had a service dog who just recently passed, unfortunately. But his microchip actually said he was a service dog on it. Mm -hmm. Um, in case, God forbid, he got loose and someone just like nabbed him. Though, if you see a service dog wandering around, coming up to people, he's probably looking for help for his owner. But that's a whole different segment. So, Lisa, yeah. Beth, that's really interesting that you mentioned about that, because I think people don't realize also a service dog should be focused on just its owner. So as mm -hmm. soon as you see something deviating from that, um, I've had that certainly with some of the dogs we've trained. And one time a young man was having a major seizure and the people didn't know what to do. And they kept trying to grab the dog and it was pulling and pulling and pulling. And they finally just couldn't hold on to it and followed. And there was uh, this young man on the floor. So there's so many things like that. That's great. Thank you for bringing that up. It's really important. It, it is because you can help save a life. I mean, the service dogs are there to do that. But, you know, people just being aware of how they work and what they do is also really important. Well, just people being aware in general seems to be at a premium nowadays. So. <laughs> I did not say people. that. People. I did not say that. Yeah, you brought up a, a very good point. We, I, I'm in Florida, and, of course, we have hurricanes and people along the coast and vulnerable areas, and everybody has to evacuate to the to the shelters. And they always tell you, have your stuff prepared ahead of time. If you own a cat, have a carrier. If you have a dog, make sure you've got a leash, and et cetera. And, People don't bring your pets medications. If you bring your own medications, bring your pets medications. Absolutely. As, as a veterinary clinician, it is amazing how many times people will come in and they want to get their animal, for example, and get their vaccinations. Well, what does he need? I don't know. I just need the shots. Well, who gave him the last ones? Well, I don't know. Uh, what? What? They, do you have any records? Well, yeah, I do at home someplace. We got a folder at home. I said, yeah, but the dog is here your folders at home. That's not doing anybody any good. I, I tell people to, and as a lawyer, you can correct me, but uh, the your animal's vaccination registration, your rape mm -hmm. proof of rabies, which is required in all 50 states and territories, is the legal equivalent of the registration of your automobile. And yes. if you don't take the animal, you don't drive your car on the road without the license plate and registration on it. You don't take your animal out without proof of vaccination. That that's that's you people shouldn't. do that all the time. I have a tailor for my dog because he's so weirdly shaped. He needs tailored clothes. I admit that. I'm okay with that. That's but, that's a whole other show. Is that it, right? She's amazing. <laughs> we'll do a fashion show with that one. If, if we can get anything to fit this little hippo, it's it's astounding. But she she does it and he's dry when it's raining and warm when it's snowing and you know. But you know, when you look at my grandparents or my father's age tips depends on which, you know, who you happen to have and how they were brought up. But it's all this it's either supposed to be outside, tied out, or if it's a cat, never allowed inside. They're just for mice, right? And then you see with like my dad's generation, they see that there's a companionship, but they're still working working animals, right? Cats have a purpose, dogs have a purpose. I don't think they'd think my son's turtle has a purpose, but that's beside the point, <laughs> right? But then you get to like my generation and even people you know, who are my kids' generation, because I have teenagers, Right. And a lot of us are forgoing, you know, either having children or whatever, because these are our kids. Right. We'd rather have this type of companionship because they don't lie to us. <laughs> and and they can't, actually, they do. <laughs> they, can't, they can't use our credit cards except for the, you know, the one the one click on Amazon. We had to fix that because I kept getting weird packages. The one cat just kept ordering things. <laughs> but, you know, so it's that shift and that shift is happening 
you know, throughout society, the legal system is always the last thing to catch up. Of mm-hmm. course, because it's reactionary. It's like the education system, right? Yeah. It takes forever for it to, to get to where it needs to be. We saw that when COVID hit and everything locked down. I mean, the court system is still flooded and backed up over a year in a lot of places. And, you know, we'll have to talk more about that too, Chris, about how uh, COVID, we'll talk about that in an upcoming show, how you can kind of fix the damage done to your dog, cat, or other animal because of COVID and the way that we changed our lives. Back to you, Chris. I think that's a wonderful topic because nobody ever talks about that. Lisa Beth, how do people get a hold of you? Um, They can reach me at... Um, my office on my cell number, which is 609-436-5731, or you can send an email to my office, which would be my name, lisabeth.klein.esq at gmail.com. Um, and you know, I'm happy to answer questions or help out any way I can. Well, I sure appreciate you coming on because this was very enlightening. And I forgot that it was Responsible Pet Ownership Month. Thank you. This for is my job. <laughs> I, I say it to everybody all the time because that's really, really the fundamental. Back to the uh, cat side of things. Dusty, I'm really grateful that you uh, found such a wonderful guest for us to talk to and build on this conversation. Take this opportunity to introduce her, please. Well, uh, you know, as we just discussed, uh, uh, getting the word out there for dangerous items uh, around the house, uh, 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 responsible pet care, this is all something that uh, vets want to get the word out. Uh, uh, Pet product uh, manufacturers want to get the word out about their stuff. How do they do it? Uh, There's an organization called Cat Riders Association. I'm a member. And... uh, uh, we write about cats, and uh, it's uh, fiction, it's nonfiction, it's behavior. And so, as it turns out, we're so blessed to have the new president of Cat Writers Association, Lynn Maria Thompson, as our guest today. Uh, Lynn, welcome to our show. Thanks. It's good to welcome, be here. Welcome, Lynn. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what do you guys Hi, want to know welcome. about cat writers? <laughs> <laughs> well, how long have you been a member of Cat Riders? Oh, gosh. I, I first joined probably about 10 years ago, I guess. And then I just got on the council um, toward the end of last year. And then the president had to resign for health reasons. And they called me up and said, would you like to be the president? <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> oh, you, you poor thing. Yeah, well, I, had, I had several ideas for things that I thought would be good to implement. Didn't quite know I'd be able to get the opportunity to do that quite as soon as I did. <laughs> but well, it's okay. all good. So uh, how important is communicating about cat care, cat cat everything. How yeah, there's so much misunderstanding out there about cats. I, When I first joined Cat Riders, I had started an, an e-commerce site to sell products for cats that the pet stores didn't stock because you'd walk in and there would be dog, 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 dog everywhere. And then over in the corner, you'd find a few little undersized litter boxes and a little bit of food and some litter. And that was pretty much it for cats. They just didn't carry a lot of things. They didn't think the cats had any needs. And if if there was a, a medicine that could be used for both dogs and cats, it was in the dog section always. Mm-hmm. So I started my site to try and bring things to people that the pet stores weren't stocking at the time that, that they couldn't find anywhere that they knew would be safe for their cats, that they knew were, were designed for cats or designed to enrich a cat's environment. There are so many needs that cats have based on their natural instincts. And luckily, over the years, through lots of communication from CWA members especially, there has been much more understanding. Cats are starting to to gain, I don't know if they're on equal footing with dogs yet. There's still a lot more dog stuff out there than cat stuff. But I think that that some misunderstandings are, are being corrected and people are understanding that cats are not really like little dogs and they're not evil and they're not all these other things that cat that people try to make cats into. They they are very interesting creatures, very intelligent, and they have their own personalities and do their own things. 
Well, you know, that, that's that's so true. And up until recently, uh, uh, everybody thought that, including the uh, veterinary community, thought that cats were just little dogs. Yeah. I had I found a, a, a veterinary manual. Or a, it, it's a, a vet school uh, manual. And it was uh, 18 volumes. And it was like 2,000 pages. And I looked in the index and... Uh, there was only one listing for cats and it said that a particular pesticide was, was lethal. And, you know, otherwise it was, you know, dogs. Yeah. And so thank goodness uh, they're starting to understand that behaviorally and physically cats are completely different yes, animals. Very different, very different. So, and in fact, the ASPCA list that you mentioned earlier has one list for dogs, another mm -hmm. list for cats and a third for horses. So they have those three types of animals on there at least. Now, they may have expanded it since I was on there last, but those were the three that they've always had on it. Mm -hmm. So that's great. It's it's a, a wonderful resource. Well, I had well, started researching a book to write about cat-friendly gardening or having a cat-friendly florist, but there is just so much information out there that mm -hmm. I would need to partner with a master gardener, I think, to write such a book because <laughs> it's it's a massive amount of information. It's also an issue for dogs, like uh, uh, the the cocoa mulch, and this is something Janice would would uh, know about. But I, you know, dogs go out in their garden and they're poisoned by the cocoa mulch and other toxic plants. Yes, you know, Dusty, it's funny because that's something with this time of year that we should really do a show or a segment on mm -hmm. because I tell everyone the cocoa bark mulch and why not to use it. And they don't understand. I said the same toxins that are in the cocoa are in the, the shell of the cocoa bean. Mm -hmm. And that's what they use the mulch. The mulch still contains it. Sometimes we know, you know, that a particular toxin is only in one area of a plant or like with fugu, which is blowfish in Japan, you eat the liver or if it's contaminated, you will die. So sometimes toxins are contained in one small area. Sometimes they're in a larger area or the whole plant. And that's something that people don't really consider. I actually have a question for our guest today um, that I hear all the time because many of my patients um, have as well, have a cat or other types of species. And everyone asks me the same thing. How do I keep my cats off the countertops near my food preparation areas. Is there <laughs> anything you can tell us about that? Because I'd have a cat, but I'm a clean freak. What can you do to keep your cat humanely without creating problems off of a countertop in your kitchen? Well, I, I remember being so proud when I had my first cat and thinking, I've trained him not to get on the kitchen countertops. Right. And one day I rounded the corner into the kitchen and you should have seen the expression on his face as he stood there on the countertop checking out a dish that I had sitting there. It was like a <laughs> kind of thing. It was hysterical. So, so I can just I can just imagine the look on his face. You came home <laughs> early today. <laughs> yeah. It was kind of the Ralph Crandon, humming, 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 I think we, we, can, we can convince ourselves that we've trained our cats not to get on the countertops. But basically, if you have cats and you have countertops, those cats are going to be getting on those countertops. And they, yes, there are <clears throat> devices that they sell that... <clears throat> excuse me, we'll give them a little electric shock or something if they jump up on something. I don't recommend that you use those kinds of things. They're not humane. Just have an understanding that your cat is going to jump up on your countertops no matter what you do. And if it bothers you, then keep a, a little spray bottle of sanitizer nearby and, and clean off that countertop before you use it. Because they're I was scared. Lynn, I was scared you were going to say to squirt the cat with it because the, with dog it, no. trainers, <laughs> the, the dog trainers with squirt bottles and water and citronella and throwing things and zapping them. And yeah, I was that, none of that is a good thing. Well, no. okay, okay, so I, I do have a favorite trick and I, I use it uh, when I'm working with my clients. And you can get those little uh, nine by 12 uh, aluminum. Um, oh, the, the foil, like the cookie tray, the, yeah, the little cookie tray and put water in it and then line mm -hmm. the, the thing and uh, mm -hmm. the counter 
and they will jump on it. And after they've done that about two or three times, they decide it's not such a good thing. It's non-aversive. They're not, uh, they're not associating the owner with that. And it mm. doesn't hurt them, but it does embarrass them. And they do remember. <laughs> Just one more suggestion on that note, because this takes us back to when Dusty and I met some decades ago. Oh. There's a product out there called Sticky Paws. And Sticky yep. Paws is a double sided adhesive that's safe for cats. You put it on cardboard with a sticky side right. up and you can move it back and forth. That teaches them as well. Mm -hmm. Right. I have used aluminum foil if I'm like yeah. if I'm having a party and I'm, I'm getting the table set out where I'm going to be putting the food. They're curious. They're going to want to get up there and check things out. So I take aluminum foil, big sheets of aluminum foil and place those around the edges of the table so that if they happen to jump up there, they'll jump on that and it kind of frightens them a little bit and they'll <laughs> jump back down. So that that does work temporarily. I wouldn't want to keep aluminum foil all over my countertops all the time, but for a party or something, it works. Yeah. All right, guys, quick break and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Burt Ward, Robin from Batman. And I believe there is nothing more precious than life. 20 years ago, we got a dog for our daughter to grow up with and she became our daughter's best friend. Everything we did with our dogs, she did with her dog. Then she fell in love with two Great Dane puppies. We were worried because we knew that large dogs normally live only seven to nine years. But we found a way to keep her dogs and our dogs wonderfully healthy and living many years longer. Living as long as 27 healthy, active years. We created Gentle Giants, a special low-fat, heart-healthy, super premium dog food and a unique feeding and care program that we believe has added precious years to the lives of our dogs. And we'd like to do the same thing for you and your dog. Life doesn't have to be too short for your best friend. All natural, Gentle Giants for the longer, healthier, happier life of your dog. Gentle Giants for life. Hi, folks. Welcome back to All Paws Pet Talk TV and radio, radio and TV, either which way you're going to hear and see from us a lot. So let's dig right back into this conversation with Lynn Thompson. We were having such a good uh, uh, conversation earlier uh, that it kind of veered off. I don't even know what we were talking about, but it was fun and I had a great time. But let me ask this, Lynn. <laughs> what is the mission of Cat Writers Association so that people can really understand what this means? Okay. The Cat Writers Association actually started 30 years ago, and it was started by several professional journalists and authors who wanted an or a professional organization for themselves to recognize excellence in communications and to provide a way for them to network with each other and to continue learning more about their craft so that they could increase their skills and, and improve their chances of getting more work and things. So that that's how we started 30 years ago. Um, we're, we're coming up on June will be 30 years since the CWA's incorporation. So um, we, we it would have been founded 30 years ago last November, but incorporated in June. So we're kind of taking June as our birthday month and and making a, a lot of um a lot of to do about that because it, it's an important anniversary to, for an organization to make it 30 years it's kind of an important thing and we expanded from just writers long ago i mean always there's been photographers and artists anybody who's creating work professionally that centers around cats is welcome to join the cat writers association so we we're always open to new members. Um, we're starting to look at maybe including some other levels of membership that will allow our sponsors to have a bigger hand in the organization and um, perhaps a student level of membership that would help to groom the next generation of professional creators about cat material. So uh, th those are some exciting things we're looking at doing. Um, we already have a, a library of books now on our website where people can go and find books that our members have written about cats. And there are links on there to where they can buy those books. And, and they're all Dusty's holding up hers. I'm going to hold up mine. This is my, my book about cats. And so um, we, we all have our, our creative works that we've, uh, we've done. And um, 
Not all of our members are book authors, though. So we're trying to create new things so that our artists and our photographers have places where they can showcase what they do. And um, people that are looking for uh, speakers or, or guests for, for shows like this could maybe come to our website and find those. So these are all things we're trying to roll out soon that we're working on the ideas and figuring out all the, the technical side of how to make it happen. Um, but we have a lot of things going on. We're, we're 30 and we're proud. <laughs> well, no I, would, I would like to, plus, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to add to that. Uh, Cat Writers Association uh, started 30 years ago. I joined 28 years ago. But uh, also, we're, our, our very organization is kind of based on our big brother organization, which is Dog Writers. So if you are a writer and you... Did we lose write about dogs, then you can go ahead and uh, look into the Dog Writers Association. It's uh, their website is dwaa.org. And ours is catwriters.com. So if anybody wants to find out more about us, they can go there. I'm just creating a new history page for the website from some material that our history committee had gathered. So um, that should be up within another month or so. I'm hoping by June, by the birthday month, that we um, will have that, that page up and running. And I'm going to be doing some video interviews with some of our, our earliest members and um, some of our, our big award winners through the years. And so there should be some exciting video content coming in, in June. And there'll be birthday wishes from all kinds of sponsors and, and various people. So it should be a really exciting, uh, exciting time on our YouTube channel and our social media. So many words to summarize responsible pet ownership. <laughs> but it just comes down to paying attention, be present in your pet's life, in this case, your cat's life. Right. You know, uh, to your point, we've been saying these things about sticky paws uh, for the last two decades. And it's been an interesting uh, experience trying to help people understand, especially veterinarians. So with that being said, Lynn, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a real treat. I was going to ask one more question, you know, because I kind of faded in and out there earlier. Um, the newer generation uses so much social media, and we hear a lot on the news about TikTok. We hear a lot on of Instagram. Are you guys as an organization garnering those folks? Are there the new generation of cat TikTokers out there? And, and, and what are they doing with this these platforms? Are they there educating are or just entertaining? On social media, yes. We have a lot of bloggers now in the cat writers. Mm -hmm. um, there didn't you, used to be a category, really, for bloggers. It was mainly professional journalists and people who wrote books. And so as blogging became more and more popular, a lot of cat blogs were getting really popular out there. We opened up membership to bloggers. And so now we have quite a few bloggers in, in the cat writers and pretty much everybody who's writing a blog is very active on social media. So we have several social media pages. Um, I think one of the few that we don't have something on is TikTok because of the security concerns about TikTok. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we try to be on all the other ones. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. We even have a Pinterest account. I'm not sure how much we post on that anymore because it's not as active as it used to be, but we, we have them on all there. We have a YouTube channel. There's not a huge amount of content on that right now, but that's about to pick up a lot with our 30th anniversary in June. So um, be on the lookout for things coming to the Cat Riders YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, and also we do we do welcome uh, videographers and mm -hmm. just all the social media. So come join us. We're a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not just crazy cat ladies. <laughs> we crazy cat, crazy guys, cat guys, too. <laughs> and where do they find you guys? Is there a website? Catwriters.com is our website. Yes, Cat that's, that's where you go. And that's all the information on us there. Lynn, you've been delightful. Well, you really thanks. have made a, a great subject matter come alive, and that's that's not easy to do uh, these days. Okay. So thank you for joining us so much. Good luck on this new endeavor being president. I'm sure you and I will talk separately <laughs> yes. about the sponsors things. Oh, yes. But, uh, in the meantime, thank you so much. Fantastic. Thanks so much. Okay, folks. Thank you, Lynn. Bye, Lynn. <laughs>
Stay tuned for a few more minutes. We'll be right back with another quick segment. Hi, I'm Burt Ward. Robin from TV's Batman. We make all-natural Gentle Giants dog food. Dogs eating Gentle Giants are living as long as 27 healthy, active years. Treat your dog to Gentle Giants' delicious dry and canned dog food. Hey, folks. Welcome back to All Paws Pet Talk Radio and TV. You know, you might notice it's just Dusty, Janice, and myself today. Somebody's missing. It's Dr. Don Canfer. And nowadays, actually, so many vets are missing. And by that, I mean there's a vet shortage out there. We plan on spending future shows talking about this because it is such an important subject matter. And you may have heard us talk about it in the past where we try and educate you on matters like when it's appropriate to call for the vet. But in this case, we don't have a vet here today. So Janice, tell us about this uh, new arrangement that you've been able to secure because I find it fascinating. Well, we have, um, I'm the behaviorist at a huge um, emergency and specialty hospital where we have MRI, CT. I mean, there's nothing like it in, in the country other than in a teaching veterinary hospital. So we have all kinds of areas of specialties and we have veterinarians who specialize in neurosurgery, neurology and are board certified, which means there's an additional three years of training plus uh, a very de detailed test. So we have everything from neurology, neurosurgery, internal medicine, dermatology, um, ophthalmology, cardiology, anything that you can imagine that a human would have, we have. And I was able to speak with some of my colleagues and we're going to have periodically a specialty vet. And we'd love to have everybody who's interested, especially if you have an animal or an interest in a particular specialty and you say, wow, I would love to ask the dermatologist or I'd love to ask the neurologist what this could be with my animal. It's kind of awesome because your regular veterinarian, you're referring DVM, as we, as we say, your primary vet knows your animal because you see the same veterinarian all the time. And that's great. But your veterinarian takes more of a total or holistic approach where he knows your dog knows to tail. But what happens when your dog or cat might have an issue with his heart or has an allergy or a rash or has a damage to his eye or her eye and needs, you know, a, a, a specialist. And that's what we're going to be able to bring to you. And I'm really excited because these are my coworkers, my colleagues, and they are brilliant and very dedicated. Did you know there's even board certified specialists, like specialty vets who specialize in emergency medicine and critical care? So just like we have with humans, we have the same thing at our vet hospital. So I'm really excited. I know we all are to have this extra level of knowledge. It doesn't replace your regular vet, your primary, you know, who you sit down and he knows and he, you know, kisses your pet. But this is great because if and when you do have a specific issue with a part, like a specialist, specialty like you have, if you have heart pains, you would go to a cardiologist. You still go to your general doctor for yourself. But yes, it exists for pets. And yes, we're going to have that as a part of the show. So we're all really, really excited. Wow. That's well, plus, and now think, folks, you don't have to consult Dr. Google anymore. You're going to have right. the premier folks with the knowledge, specialized knowledge, um, who your vet likely would consult if they didn't know a pathway forward. So that's just another cool feature of stuff we're looking to bring you going forward. Uh, because we are All Paws Pet Talk Radio and TV, and we want to make sure that we give you the best information so you can continue to be a responsible, aware pet owner. Dusty, what say you to all this? Oh, I think this is so exciting uh, because there are so many things that people need to know, uh, and and our vets are wonderful. I, I adore mine but sometimes there's just things out of their scope. And I've had them say, this is, this is not my, my deal. You need to go to somebody who's a specialist. And it's been a good thing. So to have these people here, it's not gonna replace your vet as she said, but it's gonna be great.
Well, I think it's always great to just get another perspective. And that's what this does. You know, it's we're, we're here to educate and entertain, um, but also give people just another layer of information uh, more so than, again, working with Dr. Google. So, ladies, it's been a great show today. Thank you for us three making this work without the doc. And um, folks, we'll be back next week. Be sure and tune in to All Pause Pet Talk Radio and TV because we're going to have more special stuff coming your way. See you soon.